Today's video, we're taking a look at the latest micro stack from Flywoo. Now, this is a 16 by 16 stack that connects via pins, which could be a turnoff for some people out there. However, when you put this thing together, it only comes in at 7 grams, which is pretty insane and very light. It doesn't really end there also. So theoretically, this ESC here, even though with the LEDs, it's rated up to 35 amps and it is a BL Heli S ESC. So that's kind of nice. We also do have a low ESR capacitor and some extra accessories. So what we're going to cover today is the advanced breakdown of this thing and also a beginner setup guide. If you didn't know how to set this up, I'll show you how to do that. And before we get started, a word from our sponsor. PCBWay is one of the leading PCB manufacturers out there and it is the manufacturer I use for my products. Now, if you're either a hobbyist and or looking to create a final product, PCBWay is going to be a really great choice with their 24 hour and also assembly services. So go ahead and check the links down below. So first let's start with the accessories here. So obviously you get the flight controller, you get the ESC, we get an XT30. Make sure you take note where the red is so you don't blow out your uh, EAC connecting uh, the wrong wire since they're both black. And you also get a capacitor here, which I believe is a 25 volt 470 microfarad capacitor. Don't know if it's low ESR, but it should do the job just fine. Also metal screws and some spacers. And as you can tell that the flight controller does have rubber grommets. And again, the flight controller is a 16 by 16. And again, this is a 16 by 16 stack with an F4 on here. And that's really about it for accessories. So let's go ahead and take a look at the advanced breakdown if we really need to do one here because uh, there isn't really anything. It's just a, a, a default type of flight controller currently. So I think we'll just go to this beginner setup guide here. Uh, just because it just has OSD 5 volt, there's no 9 volt, there's no barometers, there's really nothing. It's just a, a really nice, simple F4 flight controller with a pretty nice and simple uh, ESC here that you should definitely add the capacitor, by the way, because there isn't much filtration on this guy. So let's go ahead and jump into the beginner setup guide and uh, we'll take it from there. All right, so let's go ahead and start with the FPV camera. You need to be very careful when you're soldering on this for a couple reasons. Uh, these pads up here are different from the pads down here, so you don't want to bridge these. Some of them are identical, but not all of them. So you got to be very careful or else you can fry your FPV camera. Why do I say that? Well, this is a 5 volt, and if you accidentally bridge the 5 volt and this, this is the battery voltage right there. You could fire your camera if it doesn't take 5 volts, and it's not really good to mix the 5 volt and the uh, battery voltage together as well. So you got to be very careful when soldering on this thing. So first of all, let's start off again with ground, and ground is right there. We just grab that along, and we could just take it to the ground of our camera, and we're good to go there. Now next we're going to do the voltage, which is the 5 volt, and it's, only, it's always recommended to install your cameras on 5 volts, even if they take more. Uh, this way it reduces your chances of getting any weird lines in your video feed and it's something you do not want. So when you're soldering the 5 volt, which is going to be right here in this area right there, this is 5 volt. However, this one right here is VCC, so make sure not to bridge these two in any sort of way or uh, you're going to have a lot of problems. So we're going to go ahead and take the 5 volt. I'm going to just jump over ground. Uh, you really shouldn't do that, so be careful not to bridge the ground and the 5 volt. So there we go. Now we have 5 volt and ground. Make sure this nothing is touching this, because again, this one is VCC, which is battery voltage, and you don't want anything to touch that. Um, here we have the video. Again, make sure you don't touch any of these pads, because these are the motor output pads if you ever wanted to access them. You could access them from here. You have motor 1, 2, 3, and 4, or they could be backwards. So make sure you don't bridge that as well. So we're going to go ahead and we're just going to jump over right in the middle right there and we're gonna go ahead and set that up right here there we go we could erase this VCC stuff okay and just like that we have our camera set up and again just be very careful of those top pins I don't know why they did it this way but I guess there isn't much room to do it on such a tiny board here so just keep an eye out for that and make sure nothing touches those top pins I can't emphasize that enough so now let's go ahead and jump into the next step all right, guys, so now we're going to go ahead and cover the video transmitter part. Now, it's very important to take note of what I'm about to say right now because there's two types of video transmitters in the market here. We have ones that take 5 volts only, and we have ones that called battery voltage video transmitters, which we'll say VBAT. So those take battery voltage video transmitter. They take anywhere between 7 and above voltage. Now, more than likely, if you're running a 16 by 16 setup like this, you're probably using a video transmitter that only takes 5 volts. But I'm going to show you both. And the only difference is going to be the red wire for the power between those two types of video transmitters. So make sure you read the documentation 
on your specific video transmitter. So let's go ahead and start with a battery voltage video transmitter. The red wire, if you have one of those, will go here to your video transmitter right there. So we'll call this uh, VBAT right there, okay? Now, if you have a five volt, I highly recommend you take it from this pad right there. It's very important you take it from this pad actually, or else you'll fry it. And then we can just set that up and we'll just go like this and like that. And we'll say five volts. So five volts, this is where you wanna connect the red line to your video transmitter. If you have battery voltage video transmitter, this is where you wanna connect that to. So let's go ahead and erase this. So now we're done with the red wire. This was like one of the most complicated parts in a way. So next, let's go ahead and do the ground. So everything has a ground. So now we're just gonna apply power to the video transmitter. And that's just gonna go to wherever ground is. Usually it's the black wire here. Next over, we're gonna need the video line. So the flight controller can now put the video to the VTX so you can see it down in your goggles with all that beautiful information. So the yellow line is usually the video, video line. And last but not least is going to be smart audio or IRC tramp protocol. If you don't know what that is, you'll eventually get to know what that is. Uh, but if you do have it, just connect it and then later on figure out how to configure it. It shouldn't be that difficult. And on this flight controller, the this would be actually TX2, so UART2. And if you know what you're doing, uh, that's how where you would enable it in UART2 in the beta flight supports tab. You could put whether it's a smart audio under peripherals or IRC tramp, depending on your video transmitter. You should check your specifications there for that. And that's really it. That's how you connect a video transmitter to this flight controller. Let's go ahead and jump into the next step now. All right, guys, so now we're gonna cover how to connect a receiver. Now this is very important because there's three types or three main receivers out in the market. Ones that do SBUS, ones that do IBUS, and also the TVS Crossfire. And each of them are gonna be connected slightly different, especially on this flight controller since it's an F4 flight controller. The only difference really is going to be the signal wires, the wires where the data is being transmitted and that's the place where everything is going to be slightly different than usual. So let's go ahead and start with SBUS here. So if you have an SBUS receiver, you want to grab your uh, SBUS signal wire and your receiver should tell you which one that is and you want to install it on this one right there. That's very important. And this is RX1 and this is the inverted RX1 because you need an inverter. So the inverter on RX1 is this one. So this would be for SBUS. So we'll just try SBUS. Now, if you're using the TBS Crossfire here, the place where you want to set the uh, TX, because the TBS Crossfire has two pads. It has a TX and an RX. So the TX of the TBS Crossfire is actually going to go right here. That's where you want to set that up. And the RX of the TBS Crossfire is gonna go right here. And we can just say it like that and just draw that into place. So that's how you'd set up the TBS Crossfire and this is how you'd set up the SBUS. Now let's go ahead and talk about the IBUS. So the IBUS signal is going to share the same pad as the TX of the TBS Crossfire. So you're gonna wanna connect it to this one. So the way we'd set that up is we're gonna go here and we're just gonna go like that and we're gonna say IBUS. So IBUS and TBS will go to this one, SBUS goes to that one, and this little extra one is for the TBS if you wanted to set that up as well, which is highly recommended you do. So next is the five volt and ground, which is power. Most of these, just about everything takes five volt and ground. And if it doesn't, then you probably know, which is I think Spectrum still takes 3.3 volts. But anyways, five volts will be right here. So we'll just call this five volts. And then the ground is going to be right here. And and ground is right here. And those, you just route them accordingly to the black and red wire of your receiver. And that's about it. So everything is linked down below, guys. If you could check those out, those do greatly support the channel. And I do have a 7% coupon off anything RC related, uh, especially if it's not on sale. And also come join my Patreon. I do a ton of cool stuff there. You get access to a lot of private stuff, open hardware flight control. You get so many things and giveaways as well. And well, that's it, guys. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.